Hello, good morning. It's Guy Kawasaki. I am in Santa Cruz, California, and uh, my background and everything has changed. I'm in a different room today, and I must admit, I have not yet conquered all of the echo and reverb in this room, but that is just a matter of time. So uh, I am the host of the Remarkable People podcast, and I am joined by the rest of our, <laughs> our uh, what shall I say, our elite crew. There's <laughs> Peg Fitzpatrick and Jeff C. And the three of us are the three musketeers of remarkable people. And today's guest or today's episode is none other than Pat Flynn. Of, yes. Yeah, he is. This is one funny, interesting guy. And he's just uh, so freaking <laughs> nice, too. Like you talked to him yeah. about it, but I told you ahead of time, like he's just so Pat Flynn is just so nice. Yep. And he's, he really I'll, is. Now, this is not the Pat Flynn. I think there was a Pat Flynn who owned the Philadelphia Eagles or something. This is not that guy, right? <laughs> no, I don't think nope. this is him. That guy whose name was Pat Flynn too, right? I think so. Something like that. But anyway, this is Pat Flynn of, um, what's Smart the first word? Income. Smart passive income. Smart passive income. I was going to say, what kind of passive income was it? Yeah. <laughs> Although, as I point out in the interview, you know, that thing is called smart passive income, but he works his ass off. So I don't see what's passive about that, but he explains that. So. Yeah. Yes. So I've been so Peg and I. Have well, been, you you work some on the front end, and you work some at, and you work some in the middle. But for the most part, somebody can just come and buy something without you having to be there. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that's the. Well, I got reader, taste. That's the Pat Reader's Digest version. For, for I got taste. Some there's no freaking way that a podcast is passive income. Well, it's not passive and no. it's not income. <laughs> but besides that. <laughs> So, but he, he sells up, he has a great podcasting course that he's done, but he, I, I, yeah. before he even had a podcast and Peg probably remembers this too, is that he had a blog, the smart passive income. And that's what kind of started it all. And he, he was like one of the first who would like share his, what he was making a month, like from yeah. affiliates. And that he was did. a big deal. So. Yeah. I'll yeah, share his that. income reports. His income <laughs> reports were amazing, and then he stopped once he started making two million a year. He just stopped posting how much money he was making. But part of it was to show people, like you know, what I'm doing really works, and this is how it works. He was breaking down the affiliate yeah. money, and you know, I can't teach you know talk about every single thing that Pat's done to be as amazing with his smart passive income, but. Like the really short version of it, if you even look at what Pat does, is he finds something that he loves, like um, Teachable, which is a platform for creating classes, and he works with them. He's advising them, much like Guy and I did with Canva. Um, so he advises them, and then he uses their platform, and he did a class on how to do courses using Teachable, and then you can get use his affiliate link to... Um, to do it. Mm -hmm. So if Guy and I had done an affiliate link for every person who signed up for Canva based on our recommendations, oh, that would be nice. We'd be billionaires. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't have affiliate links when we started. <laughs> so, and, and um, with Pat, you know, he also has, a, you know, remarkable people. Make sure you guys go, if you haven't downloaded this episode, go to remarkablepeople.com. Yeah. But also, Pat has some, one of the, the top, like, can't remember but he's one of the top podcasts um about he's got ask pat and he's got smart passive mm -hmm. income and like mm -hmm. and he does really cool things too like last year he streamed live every day for an entire year and so mm -hmm. he's he does some really cool stuff he's 24 like, hours no just he no. went live every just day every for day. a year he, he didn't miss went live one. every day right. he he was he was late to youtube he kind of had a channel and he didn't do anything with it mm. and then he was like you know what i really just want to work on growing my youtube channel because i think it would work well with everything else and so he went all in so he he puts the work in yeah but he's oh, yeah yeah that he's is definitely one of the key messages that you know it ain't passive yeah. until it is passive but right. one of the things that he talked to Guy about and that we're doing, and Peg, I'll let you talk about this a little bit, is the circle. We've got a community. Yes. So that's yeah. right. Talk about that a little bit. So we created a community based on actually a conversation that we had with you guys when we were live um, maybe a month ago, maybe a little more. So um, and then in between that conversation and now Guy had his interview with Pat. Pat recommended Circle to him. So we created this community. And by the way, 
Pat has a class on how to use communities. Mm -hmm. No surprise, because he advises them. We do not. We're just using this. Um, so basically, we have this community. It's very much like, to me, a Google Plus community, which I like a lot. It's got little tabs on the side. It's very organized. So we're building the community. We have about 150 people in there. So if you're in there, hi. Um, if you're not in there yet, we'll see you in there. But it's going to be, you know, there's there's cool stuff coming. I'm just going to say that maybe we'll be hosting some events in there and i'll just leave it at that because there is some we secret are? stuff that can maybe we will it's so be. secret guy doesn't know about it <laughs> it's like i wasn't even invited guy will be like oh look a gail and you're invited i should probably click this no. maybe I'll, <laughs> no, just, just, I'll just attend in the audience there you go right right or and we might okay. do things like ask me anything special things that will be community only um, we're going to be talking about podcasts, the podcast guest. Um, it's a great place to network. There's people from all over the place. We have somebody from Italy who posted a picture of his homemade pizza with his view of Tuscany. So, wow. yeah. you know, really? and just, you can, and you can sign up at bit.ly forward slash remarkable people circle. And I think it's case sensitive. Case sensitive. Yeah, so look <laughs> there, it's right on your screen. That's what you need to enter to uh, join. So, you know what you should do, Jeff? Uh Oh, what should I do? You should make a QR code for the I should. I should probably thing. do that. We'll that do that be... for next time. We'll make yeah. a little QR code and it will be up in a few episodes because. <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah. but, it, but we get, uh, they're supposed to be bringing like, like live streaming in there. And so that will be really cool if we could do a, yes. you know, an ask me anything or something like that. Yep. So, but yeah. we do have some, so make sure you sign up for circle at bit.ly mm -hmm. forward slash remarkable people circle. Um, but we do have a icebreaker for today. So we're talking about growing you know, we're trying to grow our online community with Circle, <laughs> but how do you grow your online community? You and the audience, what are some ways that you have found are a good way to grow your online community? So you mentioned it's like Google Plus, and that's where Peg and I met. And I actually, my first like interview of the, like a big time C-Leb was, uh, was old guy Kawasaki over on Google Plus back in the day when we <laughs> did. Old guy. Go, when we did, well, I'm old, but I mean the old circle, old Google Plus. And back I in loved the day, Google Plus. I did too. Yeah. I mean, you liked it so yeah. much you wrote a book about it. So No shit. Yeah. I, love, <laughs> I, I wish Google didn't give up on it. They would have. I know. Like, imagine I think they if, just, go ahead. Well, no, I'm saying, imagine if Google had not given up on it, right? And then Facebook becomes meta. And I mean, they could, I don't, if they had stuck with it, I bet you they could kind of rival Facebook at some point. But well, they had live video down way before Facebook. I don't think that was ever a goal. I don't think yeah. that was ever a goal for them. I think they just wanted some kind of community thing. Yeah, it they should have kept it. With YouTube, which was brilliant, having YouTube and Google Plus together. Yeah. yeah. Superpower. Yeah. So yeah. what would you say? Um, how do you grow your online community, Peg? Because you grow online mm -hmm. communities all the time. <laughs> um, I think the biggest way that I personally build community when it's my social media is that I try to respond to my comments a lot. Like I'm very active with responding to people that I've built relationships with. So um, I think people know when they comment on stuff that if they ask me a question or something, I do try to um, get back on it. And I do use Agora Pulse for that because it's great for going back and answering. Um, and I think that helps a lot. You know, blah, I used to most I used to blog every week, but I haven't been able to do that or haven't done that in a long time. Um, blogging, I think, helps answer the big questions. And right now I gave myself a 30 day challenge to try to do some short videos to see if it actually does grow anywhere. And I'm saying so far, no, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you just what well, you're the first it week, though, isn't it? How, how long have you been doing it? A week. But I mean, you know, it takes a lot of time to make a little video. It does. It does. So, so the video um, has had no impact. Um, it's gotten me more views, but I I'm like testing it on Pinterest because they have idea pins and video yeah. and TikTok, which I only have like a hundred followers, and then Instagram Reels, which I have more followers, but I don't know. So we'll mm. see how it is. I'm just testing it to see like is that even a recommendation you can give people? Like make short videos and you'll blah blah blah. So. Yeah. <laughs> So Jonathan uh, says, sometimes you have to stay the course. I think he was talking about yep. Google Plus. So um, yeah, yep. it, was, you know, it would have been nice to keep that going. But you also yep. building a community. You can't just say, I'm going to build a community and do it like in well, a week. You know, yeah. it takes time. Right. Yeah. So. It does take time. 
Maybe it takes time and effort. It takes time and um, in the community app, which is the one that we're using, there's an app and you can do it on desktop, whichever is your preference. It's the kind of thing where you need to get the people in there that really want to network with other people. And the great thing about it is it's not social media. So you're not tied to algorithms or someone else's anything yep. else. You know, it's, yep. it's just, you know, it's free. It's, it's a place where you can talk to other like entrepreneurs, people who like things. So we're just getting started with in there, but and, you know, we're willing to like, see what you guys want to do and, and, and work around with that. So and there's in. no advertising. Mm -hmm. Nope. No advertising. And Pat has a community that he does with Smart Passive Income that is a paid community. Mm -hmm. So his community, you can join. And then there's a lot of stuff going on there that goes with his course. So that's the thing that a lot of people will do is they'll build a course and then they'll give you like communities, which used to be like Facebook groups. But this is much better because you can share all different kinds of things in there. And I really like the way the, like there's a like a drop down menu and you can share tons of different things like you could share a YouTube video link, a blog link, you can share simple cast link so you can link to all different kinds of things and it pulls oh. in like a really nice preview. So, oh. so guy, I want to ask you a question mm. on community building. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> so, so you I just do what Peg tells me. That's I, the answer. <laughs> I know, but I was I was going to ask via evangelism. So it's changed probably from when you were at Apple. To now, how important well, that was thirty years ago. But well, yeah. you know, so how important is a community if you're going, trying to be an evangelist for a company? Is that something well, that really factors into it now? If you said I'm an evangelist for blah blah blah. Well, I mean that's kind of the goal, right? So, um, at one level, you of course want to convert people, but when you have people converting people for you, that's even better, and th that would be. The great example of that, of course, is the Macintosh user group. So, you know, we, Apple, helped foster Macintosh user groups. Although, to be quite honest, Macintosh user groups would have formed even without Apple's help because it was such a great product. But then those user groups started getting more people involved with Macintosh that Apple never had to touch. And but I think that the the root of all that, you know, where it all began is because Macintosh was a great product. Mm. And so mm -hmm. if you have a great product, that's the start. If you, I, I would argue that if you have a great product, you cannot help but form a community, maybe even if you don't want a community. <laughs> right. Um, so I found... I found this great article that Guy wrote in 2006, and I revived it on his blog. But here's the things in 2006 that Guy uh -oh. said to build a community, uh -oh. which are still right. No, they're still right. So the first uh -huh. one was create something worth building a community around. The second was identify and recruit your thunder lizards immediately because people ignore their super fans, which which that's a phrase that Pat uses and he has a book called super fan. So he's it's basically the same premises. Um, assign one person the task of building a community. That would be Peg. me. That's Peg. <laughs> um, a guy was hoping in 2006 he was going to meet me to build future communities. Um, give people something <laughs> concrete to chew on, which is true create an open system. I, th I, I love it. I mean, I love that guy's blog. If you've never been on his blog or if you're like an OG Kawasaki blog reader, there is like gold and it just gets better as it goes on. Cause so far, and, and I'm not trying to blow hot air up you at all, but so far I have found no what? advice that was not correct. <laughs> no, but everything has been correct so right. far and moving forward. It's still Evergreen. like repeat your tweets was another, that was a blog that you were like, totally like repeat your tweets. Um, and then there must be something missing at the end because it only goes to eight and you always go to 10. Um, <laughs> welcome criticism, which you're very good at and I do not enjoy. Um, <laughs> foster, foster discourse. And then the last one is publicize. So, and I would say those are things that we did with Canva when we, yeah. that was yeah. one of our very, very first things that we did with Canva. Um, they had their amazing tool already, but people didn't know about it. So our job was like, tell, tell people about this great thing and build a community. And I came up with a hashtag, which was Canva love, which they still use today and makes me happy. And they also, do. um, yeah, they still use it. It's still oh. used. It's their main hashtag. They still use, oh. um, you and Chris and Cena, you guys revolutionized the internet. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I, I helped get Canva out there, you, you know, using our, your social and my social at the time that yeah. was 
10 yeah. million followers on Google Plus combined. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that was the first thing that we did was try to build that community because there was another brand which they've since buried. It was one of Cliff, one of the founders' goal in life was to bury this other brand. Um, but they had a great, they had a great community, and you know, he wanted to like it, that was that was what was missing, and people weren't talking about canva so we turned that around and got people talking you know once people tried it everybody was like this is amazing i never talked to anybody that tried it and said i didn't really like it and that's the truth yeah amazing product yeah so it's like and listening was- to this po- this podcast i never met anybody who didn't like this podcast right and if you haven't listened to it <laughs> because we know you'd like it make sure that you if you want to you just hold up your smart device and just click right on this qr code and it'll take you right there and we would love it if you would leave a rating review because that really does help get the podcast out some great episodes are there and some great ones coming up i read a review in is it next week's episode i read one of the reviews mm-hmm. yeah the guy, I think it is next. the guy who sent the tweet that said this is the best podcast bar none in the world yes mm-hmm. i praise that's the standard <laughs> that's right that's the standard by which we measure ourselves best podcast in the world it is pretty amazing so make sure uh <laughs> you guys go check that out especially this one and so you know i'm a pat fan from i have from a long time i've seen i've talked to him at conferences he's a great guy super smart he's an inventor he i mean he just has all these different verticals which is really really cool to uh to, to watch and listen to um but do you guys have any passive income streams like who are listening to us? Jonathan, do you have a passive income stream that you're working on or, or have had in the past? Um, because what do they say? I don't know who says it. Maybe it was Grant Cardone or somebody. How many? No, how many like income streams like millionaires have like six, seven. Or, yeah. six or seven? seven. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know really? if you originated that idea, but yeah. Yeah. Oh. So That's what they say. Let me count. So I have podcasts, <laughs> speaking, writing. Books. Yeah, well, that's writing. Uh, yeah, but we have courses. We have courses, and I have courses. You make money Video from courses. Video courses. Five. Shit, I gotta come up with more. Yeah, you're gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna start a stock, You bar. have stock options from things that you advised. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So those you get income on, right? I can be a hedge trimmer. Oh, <laughs> that's true. From my from my past. That's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Jonathan says Etsy, and I, I know a lot of people have side hustles on Etsy, mm-hmm. Etsy. and a lot of people huh. are doing things over there. Uh, you know, he says, you I know take... what? Oh, that's cool. I take silly <gasps> pressed pennies and make them into pendants. That's a cool I idea. just saw, Jonathan, I didn't see your Etsy site, I don't think, but I did see that somebody was making those with the Disney coins that you can do, oh. the pressed pennies from Disney, and then you make like a... Huh. So Jeff will get Jeff will be get going no. there, and he's gonna get some. He's gonna send them to you, Jonathan. Okay, to make, great. You, then you yes. can have him make stuff for Jody. I know she's probably not watching. Why don't we get a remarkable <laughs> people press thing? Yes, we can make our it's own. Probably press not pennies. easy to get that. Huh? No, I think it's probably a pretty big deal. <laughs> but yeah, so Etsy is one. But um, let's see. A lot of people, um, a lot of people in my industry have courses. You know, on top of yeah. consulting. Um, you know what would be interesting is. If you are an amateur photographer and you take pictures and you NFT them, mm. because some of these things that NFTs that are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars, I just don't understand that at all. I know but, it's crazy. So the only NFTs I have bought is from, and I'm not a big NBA fan, but I got on early with it. And my son and I do that every once in a while is the NFTs for like their trading cards, which are video, yeah. which uh-huh. is kind of cool. Are they now, appreciating? Yeah, there, there's some of them there. I've already got a couple like worth two, three thousand um, dollars. What'd you pay for them? Like thirty. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So uh, now, will they stay that way? Who knows? Um, well, but there's more value in that than Bitcoin. I mean, bit like a bet on Bitcoin is basically you're saying there are people more stupid than me, right? That's the <laughs> bet with Bitcoin, right? <laughs> Probably. I I <laughs> don't know anything about Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> All I know about Bitcoin is the Doge dog that the Doge coin right. is based on. It was I mean, um, his birthday. Oh, funny. 
the <laughs> other thing, thing, you know, a lot of other people, so like guy, yeah, you're talking about photographers, a lot of them sell like to po- deposit photos and stuff like that. They'll yeah. actually sell to these stock sites, which is a great way for a passive income. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, this is a, probably a, another great question for Guy is, what do you think is the mindset of a successful person? Because, you know, you talked okay. a lot with I'll Pat. I'll answer that. And he, he seen, he's very successful. He's got a great mindset. And you guys, I think, talk about it in this podcast. Yep. So what do you think it is? I think the mindset is that the world is a glass half full, not half empty. So you're fundamentally optimistic. I think the mindset is you default to yes, that you are always trying to help people. I think the mindset is that um, you have to be in in it for the long haul. That you know, there's no such thing as an instant success, and so you have to pay the price. And as a matter of fact, I just interviewed yesterday Dory Clark, who is all about the long haul. So there'll be a podcast about the long haul shortly, uh, and I think those three things are basically it. Yeah. What about you, Peg? What do you think? Same. Mm, yeah, I definitely, definitely think positive attitude. Um, and, and just knowing that you have to put in the hard work because there's just no easy shortcut way for anything that I have ever found. <laughs> well, well, th- it kind of leads into our, unless our... you count, unless you count YouTubing how to do something that is a shortcut that did not <laughs> exist before. That's right. <laughs> so when I want to learn something, we can now YouTube it. That and, is we'll, and, we'll, and we'll talk about that question right after this one, but what does success mean to you? Cause I think this is important and people have yeah. to define what success means. Is it living in a big house? Is it not having any debt? Is it like, guys, like I'm in a barn. Yes. <laughs> German car. Yeah. Is that what, you know, and it's different for other people. Is some people maybe like, I want to be able to stay home and, you know, go to all my yeah. kids games. So, um, yeah. So I think that makes a big difference on, you know, your mindset too. Okay. So what's your, what's your definition of success, Peg? Me? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Honestly, I <laughs> no, I I think if my kids are all doing well, I feel successful. Like I have a total mom view of that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. if my kids are not doing well, then no matter what else is going on, I feel stressed. Um, yeah. But if I feel like my kids are all doing good, then I I don't know. That's like a mother hen thing, but I think mm-hmm. it's a parent thing. Like you just it's just no matter how old they are, it's just a, like a thing. T- and I also feel like my marriage is really successful and. And it takes a lot of work. You know, that's a long haul thing. You know, you don't just phone (laughs) it in from the beginning to now. Yeah. Yeah, So, but I think, I feel like that's the thing that you put in a lot of work and it's worth it. You know, who who would not feel successful being married to you, Peg? I mean, it's just, (laughs) well, we've been married a really long time too. I mean, I know I'm only 30, but I've been married longer than I am old. (laughs) Well, you were a child bride. That's right. I was like in utero. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> especially today where marriage, I mean, where I would say our panel of three, we all have long marriages. So in our panel, it's not unique, but mm-hmm. I think that says something about us that it, we Yeah, I mean, it. and we worked hard on it and it's, I, yeah. so that's something that we, it's, you know, that means. I think I just got lucky. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> right. I married very much up. So success means for me is being able to afford elastic pants on Thanksgiving. So that's what I'm, so, but, yeah. but here's the other great question. And you kind of touched on this earlier, Peg was, um, where do you go to upskill? So yeah. what, what is know, an upskill? Like, so upskilling better. is just like learning new things. Yeah. That's a term oh. that's, that's come out lately. Um, for people, you know, if you're, you can't just stagnate on your skills cause everything changes so fast. So you got to upskill and learn new things. And that's something. <laughs> What? Uh, who made that word up? It was not me, but I millennium. used it. I like that Up, word. Upskill. upskill. Learn new skills. We'll just call it that way for guy. Um, where do you go to learn? So where skills? do you go, guy? Hey, and, the language is changing, guy. Get with it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? Where do you go to learn new things, guy? I mean, because you have. Listen, you just started podcasting two years ago. You surfed. You started surfing what? Th- four six years, years. Six ago. years ago. I mean, so it's not like you're. You know, because I stagnant. Yeah. <laughs> you keep doing new things. Well, I, I must admit, I don't, you know, I don't take myself so seriously that, you know, I wake up and it's okay. I'm going to upskill today. Today is <laughs> upskill Wednesday and I'm going to learn a new skill. Basically, I fall in love with stuff. So I fell in love with podcasting. I fell in love with surfing. I fell in love with hockey. And once I fall in love with something, 
Yeah. I think photography I mean, is yeah. something that you're always improving on. Yeah. Yeah. So once I fall in love with something, there's just no holding me back. And if mm -hmm. I don't fall in love with something, I truly don't give a shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Black and white. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Peg, what about you? Where do you go? Uh, I like to go on Skillshare. And I, you know, you do oh, yeah. find a lot of great stuff on YouTube and TikTok, like even quick little tutorials sometimes for yeah. stuff. It's like, yeah. You know, and by the like, way, Peg has a great course on skill at Skillshare on uh, Instagram. You've got a couple there, don't you? My Instagram class did not do so well on Skillshare, but my Pinterest class is the number one Pinterest class. Um, but I need to really? update it now. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's still chugging on. I get pretty good passive income from that every month. Yeah. Um, so it's good. It's like a car payment. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of car yeah. though? It's my Audi. Yeah, Lamborghini. <laughs> okay. It's my but, Audi. Okay. So it's really interesting. It's this an was Audi a a whatever Cabriolet car payment. <laughs> five five. Yeah. So okay. this was this. Is it um, five? I think four? so. I don't know. Uh, this only hit a nerve you, with only people. Only you and Rich know what I drive. I just get in it and go vroom <laughs> vroom vroom. <laughs> she makes a noise while she's driving too. Um, I do. James to make says, sure it goes. <laughs> he, where he goes to upskill, he works. He likes to learn by necessity. Yeah, there's a lot of right. learning by necessity that yep. that happens, James. You are totally right. And True. then uh, Dash, uh, remember life, says, I learned to play the bagpipes. Yeah. Wow. That oh, is wait, a, Jeff, that reminds me of you learning how to play, I play the life. banjo. Oh, I've, I've done that since junior high because that got oh, all the did. ladies, let me tell you. Really? Uh, no, I'm lying totally. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah. So I, okay. I, because that I, I learned because of Steve Martin. Actually, <laughs> mm -hmm. he was the, he was the man. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, and carving I only started doing probably ten years ago. So carving? Oh, wood carving. Yeah, wood carving. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, and I guess yeah. they, Dash says they have an upskill Wednesday. That's a cool idea. Um, <laughs> Jonathan says uh, I use audiobooks, podcasts, hopefully ours. And yeah. YouTube to learn, and then I hype, hyper focus. Okay, cool. Uh, I also read. Yes, I do like to read. So Jonathan asks, "How do you make a Skillshare class?" Peg, he's asking. Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think <laughs> anybody can make a Skillshare class. So I'll share a link, Jonathan. Um, my first one that I did, Skillshare contacted me and said, "Hey, we'd love you to make a Pinterest class," and I was like, "Oh, sure." <laughs> so that when they hired a camera guy that came and they filmed it all and edited it and everything. So that was great. The other ones I've done myself, but it was really funny because it was like this young, you know, in college guy that came to film me doing this class on Pinterest. And I was like, oh God, this guy's going to be like, this is so boring. But he thought it was great because he had a photography. He loves photography and stuff. So he was like, oh, I'm going to totally do this for all my stuff. So I was like, well, if you can <laughs> convince someone who isn't even your target audience that it's good. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think, um, and I think anybody can do it, but I will put information on how to do a class if you want. Um, if you were going to do one, you would have to film it and, you know, edit it and, and then you do the course structure. But it's honestly really easy to put it in there. And I used to have a class on Teachable, which is what Pat uses, but it's very expensive. So if you're not charging a lot and doing like the recurring income thing for your classes, it's, it actually just costs a lot mm -hmm. per year. So for me, I just moved everything over to Skillshare. People can pay $10 a month and they can have unlimited classes, mine oh. and other people's. Huh. So I feel like I probably don't make as much per class, but I feel like it's such a good deal for people. God, but, I wanted to say hey, something. <laughs> hey, I want to know, you know, how does someone know whether they should do Skillshare or LinkedIn learning or, you know, whatever? There's like five platforms. Which one do you do? Right. Well, I have never done one on LinkedIn. I would like to do one on, on the LinkedIn that used to be lynda.com. Um, I think it just depends on, I don't know, like maybe what type of class you have, like a yeah. social media class could probably go anywhere. Um, Skillshare has some business, but it's a lot of creative stuff. So it's like how to use like um, art, like artists, like they'll even be watercoloring, watercolor painting yeah. classes. The best class I saw was this girl had one called Oh My Gouache, <laughs> which is an art class. Gouache is a type of paint. <laughs> um, huh. So it, I, it probably depends on what class you, what type of class you have. But um, and then if it's like a paid platform like Skillshare and Linda or 
the LinkedIn learning, those are hosted there and then you probably get part of the income and then Teachable and there's other ones like Teachable. You That's a whole platform that you have to do everything and you pay to be on that platform. You have to pay. Uh, so Skillshare, you don't pay and LinkedIn learning, you don't pay. You know, you know, a course I would like to make because I think I see so many bad examples of it is how to set up a home studio like what we're using because mm -hmm. man people suck and you can have just that had would a, be a good skill share had, class to be honest they just yeah. had a great training about it they've had done they're doing Ooh. um ecam has they do it in their community mm -hmm. which they have oh, yeah? mm -hmm. talking about a, we've been talking about community they have a great one they have a great community oh. manager and uh, all sorts of stuff uh, from tech to lighting to stuff like i oh. didn't even know about it's pretty cool <laughs> it's pretty cool so i want you to know i want you to know that Half an hour before we began this, I did not have anything set up except the mic. I had to, this is a brand new that camera. This makes me nervous. <laughs> this is a brand new <laughs> camera. I've never used it before. And so I had to get the micro HDMI. I had to get the converter thing that changes from HDMI to USB. I had to. I just ordered some of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm telling you that you could set up the kind of, what you see now from me, although the sound could be better, what you see now from me can be set up in half an hour if you knew what you're doing. And, and we, had all the connectors. And we were talking about this. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this before the show, but one of the things you want to really do is have a place where you can leave everything up. Um, yeah. that's what I have here and it just makes it easier. So when you go to create content, you don't have to go like, oh, I got to set up my lights and do all this stuff. And it's, oh, they're ready for it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple more questions, but make sure you guys, uh, check out, I mean, Pat is fabulous. This is a great interview. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, guy asked some really great questions about, you know, Pat and his, you know, his background, he, how he got he where he was. Like I seldom ask good questions. Well, no, be, these this is, were these, really good. These were good. <laughs> so they were really good. Anyway, it was a, I, I'm a fan of Pat. I'm a fan of Guy. And I just thought this was a really good one. So right. make sure you guys go check that out. I have what? a question for Guy. So mm. in Pat's interview, he mentions several times his mentor, Michael Hyatt. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. wondering if you thought we should have Michael Hyatt on. If he'd come on, we would certainly take Michael Hyatt. Hell yeah. Yeah, let's see if we can have Michael Hyatt. Yeah, he he's is, a big, he's I amazing love, too. I really love him. He's, yeah. he's, he's, uh, he's an OG, I think, in, in just, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I I'll, just, we'll, we'll put that on the list. I just don't want these 25 year old, you know, self help gurus, Joe Blow of Blow Consulting, who wrote the Blow Away <laughs> and has, you know, Friggin' five minute TED talk from I don't know Poughkeepsie TED some um, <laughs> Keen TED Ted Keen hey, TEDx hey, Keen. Don't be dissing Keen TED. I might do that one someday. That's right. Is then there I'll a Keen like, TED? TED talk? Yeah, Is there a is. TEDx Keen? Yeah, I I contacted them once and I was like, hey, what are you guys doing? And they were like, who are you? And I was like, okay, thanks. Wait, wait, wait. So <laughs> TEDx Keen did not take you. Uh, I didn't actually apply. I just oh, kind of like contacted what them. What is and I was wrong like, What's going with on? those They're people? Like, We're done right now. And I was like, well, thank oh. you. Yeah. Couple, so, so, huh. TEDx Keen, I'm still waiting. I'm, <laughs> I'm local. She's available. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan goes, when Guy heard the word carving, his mind went straight to surfing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that uh, a surf term? For but he also asked, and, and they, I know they just rolled, this is relatively Canva new. does. Yeah. Amen, so, baby. Yeah. They just started. So you could actually edit your skill uh, share class with Canva, couldn't you, Faye? Or is it? Mm, I don't think it has. You can't do like one. jump cuts kind of deals in it. You can't like splice the video that I saw. Is it There's like 15 minutes of, the limit? I didn't see what the limit was, but I think it does have a limit. So it does have limitations. You could definitely create all your slides and everything in there and your cover photos oh, yeah. for your, you know, for your presentation. That's how I've done mine. But That's what I, I'm not sure they're at the level right now where you could do your whole class, but it's, yeah, Canva, it's not and premier. I will guess that I mean, they will be, I think that it will be there where you can do that eventually, but they you know, told a long time ago, they were never going to do video. So this is, you know, good. <laughs> So hey, you'll be so proud of me. I have completely, <laughs> utterly quit using PowerPoint. I do not use PowerPoint at all. Everything is Canva now. 
I have. I think, I think Peg should teach a Skillshare class on how to make slides. Her slides are amazing. Every time she sends them to me, like, what do you think? Like, they're bad. I'm like, they're perfect. Do my slides. <laughs> You know, so they're really good. I used to do, I've done some of guys. I told you I would do your slides if you don't I know, but then I but then it would come back. I'd have to do some favor for you or something. So I, just, <laughs> I have to stop. That's how the world works. Oh, Jeff. I know, I know. But <laughs> anyway. Has uh, Madison Reed reached out to you, Jeff, for the, the, the beard endorsement? Yeah. No, I think I think it's I don't know what color I'd do it. I mean it'd be kinda red. Red. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So make sure you guys go check out the uh, this this episode today because it's you know if you're a Pat Flynn fan you need to go you got to listen to this one because there's some stuff that I didn't know about it and I've been following him since before his podcast so uh, make sure you guys go check that out you can just click on this handy dandy QR code and as always we'd love you for, to leave a rating and review and they may even get read live on the podcast like Guy did I think it's at the end of Pat's is uh, is is it or is, is it Patty Sanchez? No. It's Patty Sanchez. Okay. Next week is Patty Sanchez. She works for Duarte. This and good. have you heard it yet? Have you guys have yeah, you listened, listened to it, to it yet? I, thing? Yeah, it's really good. It's I say it that is all the, time. the most tactical and practical podcast in the history of mankind when it comes to speaking. There is nobody's close to this. And she talks oh. a lot about and uh, and guy asks he okay questions. Um, <laughs> I just uh, he uh, he asks questions about like virtual presentations, which which was really interesting, and it made me kind of kind of rethink strategies and speakers. You need to listen to this because she's thinking that this is going to be hybrid presentation is going to be around for the foreseeable mm -hmm. future, and that changes. Yeah. I know a lot of people think now nah, we're just going to go back to it, but she and There's she has no the way. she has the the stuff to back it up, and it's really fascinating on how to keep people engaged on a virtual presentation. In fact, once again, I went out and bought the book because I have to <laughs> read all this stuff. So I don't know why you do that. Every I one know. of these people would send me as many books I as I want. I know, but I just, I like to support people. I, they probably don't need my support, but anyway. Okay. Well, <laughs> but we'll I'll, I'll, I'll my... start asking, but I, I am also very like, I got to get it now kind of a thing. So anyway. well, you can go pay for my Skillshare class. <laughs> okay. I don't get that free. I'll get books from other people, but not guys' class. So with that, thank you guys so much for uh, your comments today, Jonathan, and uh, everybody in the comments, thank you. Oh, the book. He's wanting to know what the book is. Well, should we make him stay for next week when we talk about Yeah, Patty? next. Pat's book is Super Fans and, and Will It Fly. Will, Will It Fly, fly yeah. yeah. Those are really good um, books, too. And he makes a great uh, hand um, tripod thing. Yeah, I ordered that. Video. I actually ordered yeah. that the switch pod. Which... Yeah, I've got one right over here. Yeah. You do? I ordered mm -hmm. it because my the clip just broke on the top of mine. He also so let me see. If you hold it up. Let me get it. Just a second. Oh, oh! Now he's pulling a guy. Now we can read all the stuff behind him. <laughs> it should say "Born to I Car." I packed it away from my Disney trip. So, and I can't oh. hear anymore. You're going to Disney? <laughs> He's speaking at Disney next week at an event. What kind of event? Uh, what did you say? A little, I think it's a little conference. We're talking about what you're going to do at Disney. Oh, yeah. I'm speaking, and then I'm going there with the fam. So With Disney World or Disneyland? Disney World. Uh. So I'm going to be speaking there at an event called Momentum with Lou Mangiello, and then... Um, Staying there and going to go to the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. So <laughs> that's yeah. an oxymoron. They're going to have to roll yep, me yep. out. So anyway, <laughs> corn uh, dogs. I, <laughs> I don't think they have those at the Food and Wine. No, Festival. this is they have good have stuff. Have you there. ever heard of that at Epcot? Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a huge thing because Epcot is all around the world. So it's a food festival oh. at all these different countries. Mm -hmm. So there's like Japan and Britain. Oh. And in fact, one so of the the best of the fest is from Hawaii. They have like uh, Kahlua sliders, which I'm like, I get that. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So I'm it's a pretty, it, the festival is a pretty big deal. And yeah. celebrities go to that. A lot of the big. Um, Jeff C's going. So <laughs> I met go. celebrity chefs. <laughs> oh, there you go. yeah. Is Andrew Zimmern going to be there? He might nope. be. Wolfgang huh. Puck's though has got a restaurant, right? Somewhere that he sure. shows Wolfgang Puck has a restaurant in everywhere. <laughs> He's every airport. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. 
Okay, cool, everybody. Thanks for watching. Jonathan, oh, cool, he's from Florida. Well, So we'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.